Hey guys, how's it going? Hey James. <laughs> nice obligatory check-in. How you doing there? How goes the uh, uh, the 3D modeling? tonight taking apart my uh, Norba Touch. So I've had this Norba Touch for um, a couple of years now, maybe three years, something like that. And uh, it's a really nice board, really, really nice board. But uh, I've slowly started to move away from uh, wanting heavy, uh, heavy uh, tactiles and moving towards sort of lighter, more refined tactiles. So in the board right now is uh, these. So these are uh, BK light domes. So they're not they're not crazy, but the tactility on them is uh, pretty nuts. So if I bring it up here, come on camera, you were focusing earlier. So these are the BK light domes. And so these are the special edition ones as well. So I got these in special edition uh, cyan, I think it is, or teal, I can't remember which. But they're in the board currently. Uh, but the it's the tactility of them is a little too jarring. Um, and uh, I'll bring the board on and give it a quick demonstration. I've done a uh, typing test earlier today. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be able to do a sand comparison between the two. Um, so, yeah, the, cheers, thanks James. Uh, I've uh, moved some bits and pieces around to have a slightly better stream uh, layout and everything. So, so this is the board here, but the tactility is really strong. It's so much so that it actually is quite difficult to type on now. And I've slowly but surely been moving to lighter lighter springs and so these lights are probably they feel like something like 78 gram zelios maybe a little bit a bit more like that um, sorry I'm just reading James's comment I've done an awful lot of research into these boards and the main issues that I've discovered is uh, with them is that they're topra oh 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 I I, I I quite like Topra. Topra, Topra is, is definitely one of those ones where it's got a great, great feeling to it. If, if you like it, I know a lot of people don't. So, but the so the, the original Topra for me when I first started, uh, Topra felt very almost linear, um, sort of a brown sort of feeling, very, very little tactility. And so I went to the complete next level, and so I bought BKE heavies for these. And BKE heavies were brilliant at the time, I absolutely love them, except for the fact that they were just far too heavy, um, looking back at it. And so I went, I moved down, I was looking for like medium, some sort of medium grade. And so the next step down for me was BKE lights, which are in this now. Uh, and BKE lights were perfect for a long, long time. Uh, and unfortunately, I, I moved from loving Zilio V2s to T1s to Holy Pandas. And now I've started lubing, completely lubing T1s so that the tactility is brought way down. Um, I'm just preferring the feel of it after, after trying linears for a long time. Um, so uh, this board is going to be uh, stripped out today. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the BK lights and we're going to put in the original dome sheet. So the original dome sheet has sat in this little box for a long, long time. So let me just move this out of the way. 
So the original dome sheet, I pulled it out of the pulled it out of there, and I'm glad that I kept it. But this is the dome sheet, um, and I've got uh, a nice own uh, Nova Touch, obviously, and so it comes with the additional little cutouts there. So this is going to be what I'm going to be putting in. Uh, and I'm looking forward to going back to this now. Um, I think that I'm going to really enjoy the feel of nearly linear, nearly linear tactile, pretty much. Um, after having this as a linear board, and then the board there, and there was a, there was one of the linears board before that. So, so um, what we're going to do is I'm going to put this back in the box for the time being. In there. So what we're going to do is we we are going to take this apart, and so one of the first jobs that I need to do is take the keycaps off. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, it's much e uh, nicer to install them in separate domes. Yes, yeah. I I mean I went through the whole process of uh, installing each separate dome and. It is a ball lake. Uh, it really is. Um, I sort of wish that it was like they made them into proper sheets rather than into like like what you just saw. Make them into a proper sheet rather than singles. It would make everybody's life a lot easier. Um, so obviously this board has been in use for quite a long time now, uh, and so. Whilst doing tonight's stream, I'm going to just give the stabs uh, a re um, a re lube, and I'm also going to give the um, uh, the rails and everything like that uh, on the actual um, sliders a re lube for 205 grade zero, uh, just sort of freshen it up a little bit. And hopefully, that'll bring a new lease of life into it, and I'm going to going to be back to having this as my sort of daily driver um, seeing as um, I have sold the little silver linears board well I've sold the, the the board that has the linears in I'm not selling the linears because uh, some of you might remember from uh, one of my previous streams uh, that thing took me 28 hours to break those switches in so they're not going to be getting sold anytime soon How is everybody's uh, bank holiday weekend going so far? We had a barbecue here yesterday. Um, it was nice to finally uh, be able to sit back and enjoy the garden a bit. Doing an awful lot of uh, gardening work. Uh, I, I have heart pun. Oh. What a way to, uh, what a way to enjoy your uh, uh, your bank holiday weekend. Perhaps some Gaviscon. That's my highlight of the day. Well, I thought your highlight of the day would be uh, having to redesign your board around uh, 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 some um, very very well made um, uh, case feet. And then having to redesign it again further from there because you realise that the case feet weren't quite right. <laughs> We've got a runner, boys. So we'll be going back with um, uh, GMK uh, white and black uh, after this. I think the board really complements the colour uh, and the, the caps feel excellent on here. Yeah it is and uh, I should have shown it off, I'll show it off when it um, when, um, when I've got all of the caps off, 
but this is um, one of his one of Norbauer's sort of special edition I guess boards um, I've managed to buy it in the round of Pi so um, on the underside he had the Pi symbol uh, milled into the underside of the case um, and I don't think he's done that for any of the other uh, any of the other boards that are out there so Uh, the music level is all okay by the way guys, um, just want to double check to make sure it's not too loud, not too quiet. Cool. Updated OBS earlier so uh, you can never be too sure. And I have a bunch of typing tests coming out very shortly. So let me just get a pot for these. Uh, have I got one back there? No. Just find a pot thing. I had a bunch of pots here somewhere. Oh bloody hell. Hey Check UK, thank you very much for the follow. How's it going, Chet? How are you liking the uh, new uh, stream uh, setup, by the way? I have a whopping great big rig over the top of my head at the moment uh, for this. Thanks. Enjoying the zeal switches from your group by. Uh, hey, <laughs> have you have you done anything to the zeal switches yet, or uh, are they still stock? Great switches. All right, let's just give this a quick brush off because there is a little bit of junk in there. I think even the most clean keyboard person can't get away from a little bit of stuff getting in there. Much better. Okay, that's better there. Uh, yeah, Loop Zilios with 205 grade zero, really nice, smooth, thocky. They yeah, they, I, I. I Fully agree that I love um, putting a little bit of 205 grid zero on the rails for them. It makes them like super smooth, and it just increases that almost almost increases the tactility because how smooth the stem becomes. Really lovely feeling. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get it out of the case, so you're going to be able to see all of the fingerprints and everything. But that is the pie that is milled into the. Really nice milling. I'll bring it up to the camera as soon as I can now. Uh, there's lots and lots of junk on it on the board, but you can see really nicely milled pi symbol into the bottom there. Oh no, got to be this way around. Well, if you um, check, if you like smooth thocky, I think you would like uh, the BK lights that I had in this or the normal type prep because Thok is really heavily demonstrated um, with this board. So what we're gonna just do is we're gonna take the case off. So it's only held in with a few screws into the bottom housing. Um, you'll also get to see the uh, whopping great big piece of sorbethane that I've got inside of this thing. So what did you um, 
What did you put the uh, Zelio V2s into? Thunk in a second as the top the top housing hits the table. Oh, it's just going to nice and easily lower onto it. No, it's not loose yet. That one's loose. That one is also. There we go. So let's give this a clean. You can have a quick look at the inside. Because realistically, this is just a very big flat piece of metal. You can see he's got a couple of little. Uh, come on. I need to put my hand underneath it ever so slightly. So realistically, it's just a very big flat piece of metal that he's got. Uh, I need to keep my hand underneath it because it's so thin. Yeah, you can see that it's just got some screw holes in, but it's just a flat, nice flat piece of metal. Um, so let's put this off to one side. So the interesting part of his, how he holds it in. Oh, oh shit. Okay, you forgot about the screws there. I was throwing them all over the floor now. carry on and I'll clip them in a minute so you can see how he's holding it together so literally it is plate PCB underneath it with the sliders inside and it's held down by these two screws here so these two little screws either side um, are just pressure fitting it down into the place and on the top housing you'd have noticed that there was two little cutouts on it to uh, so that it sat in there nicely so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to release this. There's going to be an awful lot of ten tension. I thought would be underneath it because the sorber thing is underneath it and it is really pushing up against it. So what we're going to do? Is open my iFixit kit. Move the iFixit kit over here. We'll put the big screws in there. So there's two screws on the floor somewhere. Or on me. Oh no, there's one. Ah, there one's. I'll just get the other one from underneath the desk. Right. Try not to be that stupid again. Okay, so we've got those. Let's just undo this. So you'll see inside the, I lift this up, um, I might need a pair of tweezers just to pry it. Sorbethane has a tendency to almost stick. Come on. There we go. You can hear it peeling up. So you can see the big old piece of sorbethane that I've got in here. And this is quite thick stuff, um, but it really does help with the uh, sound dampening inside this case because the case is it's quite hollow, um, and so it does tend to uh, not to echo a little bit, and it's not that great. But you can see that I've got 
try and lift it up a little bit. But you can see that the thickness of this sort of sorbethane that I've got in there, it's very thick stuff. But works like a charm, works like an absolute charm. Um, I've been using this sorbethane in here for a little while and it it helps with the thocky the thocky sound to it. So what we're gonna do is we don't need the bottom housing anymore um, for this part of the build. So I'm just gonna sit it onto my wife's seat next to me here. So what we've got is this is the PCB here. And so you, the PCB is it's got all of these little dome spots um, and it's all pressure fit directly to the dome so the, you've got the sliders at the top the dome sit in the middle there's a spring underneath it and then the PCB clamps it down with some pressure so to be able to release this pressure what we have to do is we have to unscrew uh, the screws that are here um, and uh, that will then allow me to lift the PCB up and reveal the domes that are underneath Green PCBs are underrated. <laughs> yeah, it's especially the case when uh, you can't see the PCB at all once it's in the case. So we're just gonna grab ourselves a uh, Phillips head. We're just gonna get to work undoing this now. When we, it doesn't really matter what order you take them out in. It really does matter what order you put them back together in though. You want to be giving it equal pressure across the border otherwise you generally find that certain domes will just decide not to work. And it does happen to be the bane of everybody's existence trying to get the domes to work again. I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to be an easier experience for me seeing as I'm putting the original dome sheet back in. Can you attest to that James or is it going to be difficult nonetheless? As, uh, uh, I was just saying um, do you reckon it's going to be easier to put the original dome sheet back in compared to um, putting BKE heavy domes or the BKE domes, the single domes in? Yeah, much easier. Oh, that's good to hear. Because you've already done this once, haven't you? I've already done it a couple of times. Just the once. Oh, fair enough. Do you still have your um, Nova Touch out of interest? Or did you um, did you get rid of it? Oh, so oh, so Dan got it. Oh, I see, I see. And I believe Dan's selling that at the moment as well, or looking to sell it at the very least. I should actually message him. Um, do, do you remember if it's it, he's got um, the BKE heavies in it, or is it the mix of them? Because I might, I, I should drop him a message to see if he's interested in the the uh, BKE lights from this. I'm sure it had heavies in it for a while. But been over a year. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember. I remember actually. Um, you saying about. I th well, were the heavies mine? I can't remember if I gave you the heavies or if I gave Amber the heavies and she gave them to you. I just remember having a load of BKE heavies um, about for a while, and then. You got them all from Amber, yeah. I gave I gave Amber um, because you you have to buy them in 110 packs um, for this. You only need 88, so I, I remember having a bunch spare, and she wanted to try some, so I gave them gave them to her. And so obviously you've gotten them uh, 
gotten them from there with a bunch of the extra she had as well because I think um, uh, Jay Chan sent her some at, at the time. look at the consistency of the lube that's inside of here um, once I've got got everything off to see if to see if they do actually need relubing um, I'm possibly thinking yes a very light amount but uh, it could just be that I don't even need to relube them it just needs the um, uh, just needs the domes swapping This is the second to last screw. And that's the plate plate dropping there. Okay, so we've got all of the bits aside there. So now I've got to be very careful when I do this because some of the uh, domes, they, they sort of, they'll stick to it. And so when you lift it up, the domes come with it and sometimes they just drop and there's a little tiny conical spring inside of there and if you lose them things they're a fortune to um, get new ones for and if you damage them you can ruin the um, uh, ruin it entirely and it won't won't um, uh, won't actuate properly so what I'm gonna just do is I'm just gonna give it a slide forwards to sort of push the domes off and then lift up Oh, there's a few that are sticking still. Come on, be be nice, be kind to me. Okay, there's a bunch that have stuck. Okay, I'm just gonna be very careful. Oh, there we go, that's not what I didn't want. Okay. There we go. So you can see a bunch of them have stuck, continued to stick there. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to move this out of the way so we've got a little conical spring here so what I'll try and do is I'll try and show you one of these conical springs oh hey Andy how you doing so if I bring it up you should be able to see there's a tiny little conical spring and so you depress these and these sit inside of the domes so I'm just going to be very careful with them because it's very very easy for them to get uh, mingled within one another. How you doing though Andy? You doing well today? And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and have it so that I keep the actual um, the domes with the conical springs inside them for now so that I can ease, more easily move them over to the uh, new domes when I put the new domes into place. If You'll, if that doesn't make sense, you'll see see what I mean in a, in a second here. Um, these little springs are little buggers; they really are. I'm doing good things, just chilling all day, really. Long weekend is nice, yes, that certainly is. Um, how's it going where you are? Yeah, everything where I am is going well. Um, had a barbecue yesterday, uh, really chilled day today. I've just been chatting with James this afternoon, pretty much. Um, and then tomorrow, we are going on a bike ride. Uh, bike ride and then a little bit of gardening work in the evening. Um, should be nice. I've been in there that long that some of the uh, rubber BKU domes have started to stick to one another. I mean, these are literally just overlapping with one another. They're not 
they're not from the same sheet. They just they they've had that much pressure put down on them for that long. They're sticking together. Okay, these are the ones that I've got to be slightly more careful with, not to drop the springs. Yeah, always got to love a barbecue. I, I take my barbecue very seriously. Got a, got a uh, nice big Weber barbecue, like uh, a little bit bigger than Bledon's one. Lovely bit of kit though. This, all of this lockdown is done and everything like that and we're moving back to more normal life I'll invite you around for a barbecue Okay, so all of them are off. So you can see here, this is the PCB that it uses. PCB is still in really, really nice condition. Uh, Andy says, uh, why are you swapping these domes around? Uh, I have actually started to go off of uh, quite heavy tactiles. So these, that they're, as James has put it, they're quite jarring uh, with their tactility. Uh, and I've started to go off of that a little bit. I'm not enjoying it nearly as much as I used to. Uh, and so I've decided that I'm going to put the original dome sheet back in. Uh, and I thought it would be also a good time to show off the new sort of streaming setup um, that we've got here. Uh, one thing that I'm just going to do very quickly is I'm just going to shut the rest of this curtain because there is a little bit of light hitting the back wall there. Yeah, I thought I'd show off the new streaming setup because I've got I've got some nice little RGB lights there. I've got the the camera above. I've also got like a light here now. Um, yeah, I've got this. If I if I were to zoom out, I can zoom out and show you guys. Uh, there is a massive metal leg here. You can just about see it. Uh, big old metal leg, and there's a bar that goes across, and then there's a, another metal leg on the other side. Let's zoom back in. So, looking at the PCB overall, it looks nice and clean. There's a little bit of lube here and there, so I'm just gonna uh, just grab a cloth. I'm just gonna just give it a quick rub down of just just get rid of any excess lube that there is on the from that. It was just mainly around the space bar. And to be honest with you, I'm going to place the PCB off to the side here in a second. To be honest with you, looking at it, they look really, really good still. Um, the space bar has got lots of lube in it. Um, I'll bring it up so that you can see it a bit better. Uh, so you can see that there's plenty of lube still in the space bar. And the actual sliders themselves look look very good actually still still really well lubed so I don't think I'm gonna need to actually relube these at all um, yeah I don't think it'll need a relubing at all um, I think it's actually in a really good um, condition uh, so uh, Andy says uh, I got T1s in the canoe from Daniel but I'm thinking of swapping them out well I've also got some T1s I bought I bought uh, 
some T1s and I'm currently going through the process. These are the ones that are done, uh, these are the ones that are still to go, but I'm spring swapping them, uh, uh, filming them uh, and lubing them. I'm entirely lubing them um, with some 205 grade zero, uh, which is making them godly once again. So let's grab the uh, dome sheet. And let's throw the dome sheet back in. Oh, I see what you mean, James. How easy that was. That was incredibly easy. I didn't expect my uh, I didn't expect the stream to only take 45 minutes. <laughs> Best to slow down slow down and have a drink. overall I'm pretty happy with that with how that looks um, put these two back in so the only issue that I can actually see happening is with the ISO enter because it's like a little separate pad there and the uh, shift Music has stopped. Let me get the music going again. Uh, uh, video pause. Are you still watching? Yes, yes, I am. So, what are you thinking of swapping them out to, uh, Andy? Let's just make sure the domes are the right way around, or look the right way around at the very least. Okay, that doesn't look like the right way around. be fair neither way looks like the right way around this looks like it's been cut off of a different different one entirely yeah, it's probably actually cut from around here somewhere because you can see when they've originally made the dome sheet they've they've done the ISO bits and they actually sit in the sheet like that nicely so, um, it's probably come from around here originally okay so the finicky bit of the um, the move happens now so the finicky bit is I have to move all of the conical springs from here into here um, and these little conical springs are extremely tiny um, extremely thin as well and the thing that causes most of the problems with topra boards these things not being lined up nicely I might need to get something just to sit this up a little bit so that the domes can um, sit a little bit more nicely. Grab some tape. Just need them to sit up a little bit higher than normal. I might use the uh, arc tool actually. Okay. So let's move these over. Oh, sorry, I've missed a bunch here. Uh, I'll probably swap them for linears. Uh, I only have cream and face, which is, uh, well, creams are very popular at the moment. Uh, very, very popular at the minute. Um, uh, I have some Vint Blacks, but they need desoldering. Uh, what are the Vint Blacks from, out of interest? Are they good Vint Blacks, or are they Weiss Vint Blacks? And if you do have mint blacks, um, do you uh, do you want me to ultrasonically clean them for you? Um, speaking of creams, did you still have some spare housings, Matt? Uh, yes, I do somewhere. I have a bunch of 
I have about five or ten creams somewhere. I, I do, however, have a bag of, um, I don't know where they've gone. I did have, they're probably on top of my computer, I did have a bag of the stems because I swapped them out for UHM WP ones. Uh, but I do love, uh, do have lots of spritz springs that I ordered from G Boards. You'll be happy to hear. Well, hey, I, uh, I've got some. I, I got some of mine from G Boards over uh, sitting on top of the computer, and I've also got some coming from Sprit as well. He's. Um, I was chatting to him the other day, and um, I needed to buy some um, more. Um, needed to buy some more 72 gram gold ones and so he's thrown in some extreme progressive linears or something along those lines so I'm, I'm interested to try these new um, new ones out that he's sending because they are brand new springs which should be a bit of fun I should do yes I should I'll get the cardboard box for the time being and we'll Split them up and I'll put them back in their original bag that they came from in a little bit. Um, uh, I'm just too lazy for lubing, uh, aren't we all? Aren't we all? Uh, and James James says, uh, Yeah, I need 70 ish housings. Uh, sorry, I don't have um, 70 housings here. Um, the only the only housings that I do have, which you I don't know if you'd be interested in at all, is I have a bunch of B Sun brand switches, and uh, they've got the same material as uh, bottom housing as Holy Pandas, just the um, uh, the leaf inside is a little bit weaker. Uh, it's not got as uh, stronger leaf, which gives that beautiful tactility that Holy Pandas have. Uh, Andy says, "Yeah, my Vints are Weiss ones. Um, I don't think they'll be amazing. Yeah, I, for some reason, I James might well be able to tell us a bit more because he's a switch collector and he, he's got a very good knowledge of this sort of thing. But um, of all of the Weiss boards that I've, the the vintage black Weiss boards that I've had in the past, um, the 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 switches are Vints. They're they're they they should match everything else, but." Compared to cherry boards, they just seem a little bit more scratchy. Uh, they just don't, they, they don't seem as, they don't seem to uh, be as smooth. It's, it's kind of strange. I don't, I don't really understand the reasoning why, but um, that's, that's always been, been what I've had at least. And James might be able to shed a little bit more light on, on it there. So, for Andy, out of interest, what are you going to be building the uh, Asus Bates with? Uh, I think a lot of differences are impermissible. Oh, fair enough. I always just wondered if it was just a completely different batch that, like, Cherry were just sending different stuff to Weiss in general. Um, it was... The, the level of scratch that I've had from them, even after ultrasonically cleaning them. Um, I used vin uh, Weiss Vints, which were great, and used Cherry Vints, which were awful. Oh, fair enough. Maybe it's maybe it's just certain batches that um, uh, Cherry have made in the past that overlap between the boards, and perhaps more Weiss boards were made with them um, in a certain year, and I don't know. I think the main factor is the condition of the boards and how it's kept. Yeah, maybe. I mean, to be fair, with, with a vint board, I guess you do want a, a vint board that's been pretty well used anyway. Um, you just want one that somebody hasn't hasn't eaten their dinner over the top of at the same time. Uh, 
Uh, well, fingers crossed. Uh, mine won't be poo poo. Yeah, I can only hope for you. I can only hope for you. Um, like I say, I'm more than happy to. Um, uh, more than happy to ultrasonically clean them for you if you'd like me to. Uh, and I do. I do have some films behind me as well. Uh, I've got some kin. I've just got some kin black. Uh, come on. Got some TX uh, black film. Uh, thinking Ace of Spades with Topra switches. <laughs> have you been making a new PCB, Andy? To be honest with you, if you had made a new PCB and you'd managed to make it Topra compatible, and I could put these BK light domes in, and it was the Ace of Spades, then I 100% would. I'm going to be building my my two Ace of Spades. <laughs> so I had a chat to Salvin, and uh, he thinks I, he's not 100% certain, but he thinks that there might be a um, one extra board uh, that he has after he's gotten his as well. Um, so I'm hoping, really, really hoping that there'll be one extra board, and I will also uh, have two Ace of Spades. Um, and one is going to possibly have T1s or the Holy Pandas from the board here. This board here. It'll have the Holy Pandas in it. Um, probs doing alpacas uh, when they come. Al Aren't alpacas just T1s? I thought alpacas were just T1s. Just a recolor as well or am I getting them mixed up with another switch I, I don't know linear in nylon housings oh, maybe I'm getting it mixed up what's the um, what's the T1 recolor koalas yes but people need to stop thinking of um, animal names Go down what C3 have done and start calling them fruit. And no, in fact, don't do that because you, we've now got blueberries and we've got the tangerines. We're going to have dragon fruit. You need to think of a better naming model for these damn switches. AKB be Chihuahua switches. <laughs> They're going to be extremely light with a very, very big thog. So like li little switch, li little um, little dog with a big bark. <laughs> mm. The first ever switch to be called Yappy out of the box. squeak when you bottom them out. You get your own handbag to um, to transport them about as well. So if if what would you what would you say is a chihuahua of a switch currently in the market today? If you had to think of a, a current day switch like has a uh, squeak to it what would you say it is chalk switches yes yes tiny and bloody useless <laughs> do you agree there Andy or uh... 
So if you if you've got if you've got a chihuahua switch, which is the chalk switch, what are you gonna put as say like a middle of the road sort of switch? Say like a collie, something like that. Something that's reliable that is is a good switch in general. Uh, when I mean collie, I mean like collie Labrador sort of so, a solid dog, pretty much. Gat black, yeah, gat black is pretty good. Oh, I mean gat yellow, gat yellow is the uh, is probably the 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 faithful, yeah. You're probably right, Gat Yellow. So we're going to say Gat Yellow is the uh, a standard Labrador, yeah, standard Labrador. And then you've got Pedigree Labrador, which is the Atelier, yeah. Agree? Yeah. Pedigree ta Labrador is Atelier. Okay. So so we we've done the bottom and the middle. What's the top? What's the Great Dane switch? What's the sort of switch that you hear it bark and you think, bloody hell. H1. You, re you reckon a H1 is a Great Dane. I was swaying towards a, um, um, what is it? It is a box, uh, box Navy Blue. I'm going off both sound and feel here. I'm, I'm mainly thinking of like a, a thunderous sound that you hear. I mean, if you've ever heard, heard a Great Dane bark, my god. So you, you're pleased with your H1 purchases. I'm oh, on B3Gs. Not ha heard of them before. They are they pretty uh, pretty loud. You c you can't count anything that has a solenoid involved with it. By the way, that doesn't count. Doesn't count. Very clicky. But um, going back to the previous bit, you're happy with your um, purchase of H1s, are you? Because I was going to mention to to Andy that the H1s might be a good choice. Yeah, I think Jay has said it, and I think you might have said it as well, it, two different times, that uh, they're probably the best non-lubed switch. So for Andy, who does not want to lube switches, it seems like these might be a perfect option for him. Okay, we're just going to get this dome sheet sat down and in here a bit more, and then we're going to get these uh, conical springs placed down a little bit nicer. Um, I should have bought H1s, but I just bought alpacas. Well, um, uh, well they come factory lubed, um, and they did a decent job. Alpacas uh, are almost the same level, to be honest. Much n uh, nicer sound. Well, I've, I offered James the uh, C3s that I've got, Andy. I've got, um, I've got a bunch more C3s than I th thought I'd need. I ended up Buying, I ended up buying some the day before um, Equals Ray ended up adding them to um, the polycarb board that I've got coming because, because there was a massive delay with it. He's added uh, 90 switches to go into it if we wanted to, uh, free of charge. And so I've got these extra C3s now, and I've offered them to James. But um, for linears, you might well might well um, enjoy them. 
just come. Uh, you'll have second reserve if um, James doesn't want them, which I think is uh, which I think is fair. If you want them, that is. I think Vogon was um, asking um, a little while ago because he was interested. But I think he might have just bought some, bought some himself. So what I'm just doing here, just very quickly, I'm just going to bring the board very slowly into the center here. So at the moment, all of these are, uh, they're not they're not completely flat. So I can't lift it up and show you very easily because otherwise the springs will literally just go everywhere and it'll it'll completely ruin this. But some of the springs aren't sitting flat, they're, they're sort of sitting at a slight angle like that. And if they're sat at a slight angle like that, when you put the uh, PCB back down, they won't make proper contact. And if they don't make proper contact, you don't get a uh, press at all. It, it'll feel like it's pressing, you plug it into the PC, nothing. Um, so you need to uh, flatten them out nicely. Um, it says, all depends on the price. Well. Well, I wouldn't rip you off, James. Well, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't rip you off that badly. <laughs> now, oh yeah, you can have them for um, what I bought them for. So, and if you don't want them, um, Andy can. Ha uh, Andy seems like he's interested, so Andy can have them. Otherwise. <laughs> James, out of interest, are, are C3s from the same manufacturer as H1s? Or am I getting them mixed up with another switch entirely? Uh, let Andy have them. I've already ordered 140, Jesus. Okay, so Andy, if you're interested, when they turn up, I'll have them here at the house. We can do some sort of... Um, I'll walk past and throw them over the fence, and then you wait two weeks, and then you can grab the bag from from the uh, from the hedge, sort of thing. Okay, so these look all good to me. I just might need to push these. It seems like I might need to put something underneath this because it's holding it up ever so slowly. That's a bit better. I just need to get something to need something to sit under this side that's just going to pop it up enough. Maybe these pair of pliers will do. Might be perfect actually because I can then have one leg. Okay, that does a better job, but not the perfect job. And that does the perfect job. Okay, there we go. So all I'm doing is just making sure, because I've raised it up, the the sliders have all dropped down. So you've got the the plate like that, and the sliders when you when you lift them up, they drop, drop into place, um, and that means that the um, uh, the domes can actually drop drop down with them, so they're not just sat up. Uh, uh, sorry, let's have a look. Um, Yes, they are, but different mould. H1s have a modified mould of their own. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah, do you think Tangis need a spring swap? From from what I've heard so far, people have said not normally. Um, I'm going to be spring swapping them because I prefer 72 gram uh, linears. Um, and I've, I have actually got some extra springs if you do need some extra springs. I've got a bunch of 72 grams. And I've, I think I have some 63 progressives coming too. Okay, this is all looking good to me. Just having a quick, just look over the board. They're all sat in the middle nicely. So what I'm gonna do now is very, very delicately here, is I'm gonna take the PCB and I'm just gonna place the PCB on top. And we're gonna try and get some of the outer screws and a couple of the middle screws in, in there um, so that we can get it at least placed for now. So that's it on there. Not perfectly placed though. There we go. 
So I can see the screws through here. So I can see each of the um, where I've got to put them in. So I'm going to go with a few of the longer ones and a few of the shorter ones. The longer ones will uh, hold it a bit better. So I'm just going to place them in. And we're just going to very, very slowly just tighten this up. And what should happen is we should get to a point where pretty much all of them are in. And then we can just give it a final last crush down. Hey Ben, how you doing? How is, how is the upgraded computer, Ben? You still enjoying it? <laughs> Andy's standards are quite low, apparently. They remind me not to send any uh, switches to Andy to be lubed anytime soon. Very much so. Oh, good to hear, Ben. Good to hear. How, how's the um, how, how's the extra drive that's in there? There we go. Basically, a tech whiz now uh, after adding an M dot two, and now can play COD again. So you uh, you playing the new? I don't know what the new COD is called. Warzone, is it? War something? Yeah, is it any good? I, 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 I play some Battle Royales. I play an awful lot of Apex Legends. Um, and uh, is it is it fairly fast paced? I've not I've not really watched any highlights or anything like that of it. I haven't actually got the game. Fun with friends. Ah, fair enough. It's a bit like Apex. If you try and play Apex Legends on your own, it's a bit dull. But if you play with your mates, then it's alright. Yeah, it is. It is free. Um, not how I play. Camp in a corner. Corner me. <laughs> well, you're using the element of surprise. You're, you're, you're taking it as a realistic tactical shooter exactly how you should play these games <laughs> cod nip basically you've got to get your knit skills out of there somehow and andy have you played any of it or um uh, james have you played any um, cod warzone I need to get some of these um, outer screws done now. Um, I just played. Uh, Andy says no. I just played Battlefield Four. I haven't played any Battlefield either. Uh, I can't play COD because it turns me into a ball of rage. Oof. Oof. Can't imagine you raging, James. I avoid all FPS uh, games on principle. So that that uh, DayZ standalone game that you were playing yesterday is that you are you playing that in third person, are you? I uh, don't know why you're making another keyboard. The other one uh, on your screen looks fine. <laughs> You can't have more than an. Uh, more, you can ha oh, bleh. you can always have more than one, Ben. You can always have more than one. A little bit. I had to take this one apart earlier. Um, I tried doing a typing test on it, and uh, it was. I, I swapped the space bars for some reason, um, uh, and like it just didn't quite feel right. So I ended up having to take it apart and swap the old space bar onto it and the, it's a little bit yellow this one but I'm gonna um, uh, get get it uh, so that it's nice again I'm gonna have to um, 
I'm forgetting what it's called, Retro Brighter. Uh, get the pizza crumbs out. Yeah, I mean, get the pizza crumbs. I mean, I had a bit of tuna tuna salad in there. Yeah, you got to get it all out at some point. Yes. No, don't do that over the keyboards. Also, do not uh, do, do not uh, go go searching for coming on keyboards anytime soon. Well, it's, I don't know if you know about it, Andy, but it's the one famously um, that I think it was Evan was the uh, admin of. There, there is there is a subreddit, uh, Ben. There is there is actually a subreddit, and uh, it was made by a uh, quite a big guy in the community, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I, I believe it's minivan Evan. Um, He, there was a there's a subreddit that he he made at some point called coming on keyboards I think more than likely those people have taken posts down more than likely <laughs> boring <laughs> Not as not as much action there, Ben. I mean, there's a subreddit for you to um, to fill in. This screw does not want to go into here. Come on. There we go. The screw's a little bit off, I think. Uh. Christ, what an absolute retrobate, yeah. Evan making new keycap profiles on Keep Talk. Is he really? Um, well, two of the two of the boards behind me, uh, that one there and that one there, both have got light cycle on it, which are Evan's, uh, which is Evan's um, uh, DSA profile keycap set, uh, and. Probably pretty rare at this point, to be fair. Um, DSA light cycle because I'm, I'm assuming a few people have broken their sets because the um, uh, the cap the caps were never actually properly tested properly. So um, when you put, when you put an Alps cap in, because it's double shot, the uh, the double shotting was the part that was the anchor for the, the for the uh, for the stem of stem of the um, cap and so on some of them uh, some of them are pretty terribly um, held in place so I mean if you think about some of the, the, the caps that are on here if you were to look at say these keys here how little double shotting they would have um, because they've got so little double shotting they've got such a little anchor you try and pull them up you end up ripping the the stem off of the top top of the keycap like n for instance there's only it only has it on that the um, the slanted section of it that's the double shotting that's the anchor for it um, yeah so the keycap set that's on that board there is never coming off um, I, I actually pulled the N up off of it. I, I managed to get, fortunately, this was right at the very beginning um, when I got sent it. Uh, Evan sent me a brand new N because I snapped the um, lid off of it. Here you are. Thank you very much. Mm. I've, brought, I've been brought some tea. Uh, you just missed her there, Ben. <laughs> yeah, she's brought, me a, she's brought me a nice cup of tea. And a couple of biscuits. Put that there. Um, 
Oh Jesus, uh, I've just seen uh, James's natural resin comment. Ooh. Homemade resin. Hope not. Um, ben says, never knew keyboards could be so complex. Yeah, I mean, some, I mean, some boards are much more complex than others, uh, James. Um, you can make them very, very complex. Um, I mean, this is just a, a, a fairly easy design that, that we've got here, but James has got, um, like gas, what, what you call gaskets inside them. Uh, holding the the um, plate and PCB, well, uh, holding the uh, plate separate so that you get nice isolation and stuff like that. A lot of um, a lot of work and a lot of effort goes into these things, and uh, James makes it look very easy. Okay, so now that uh, all of the screws are actually in, I'm just going to quickly go round. And just tighten these down a little bit because they're quite loose at this point. Um, yes, and he did put a USB hub inside the keyboard. I mean, he just milled out a whole section of his keyboard and just threw the hub in, but uh, there's still there's still a USB cut hub inside of a keyboard. As long as they have all of the letters and numbers, I think they're okay. So you're not going to like the board that I've got above me here. I'll I'll grab it and you'll. You might laugh. So this is one that I made. So it's not good. All of the letters and numbers. <laughs> it's uh, you're obviously missing the number row, and you've also got a weird layout. But uh, it's uh, it's more of a design piece than anything like that. This is um, uh, this is the UK forty that was made a long, long time ago. But uh, to give you an idea of how nice it is. This is the underside of it. This this section here needs a little bit of tidying up still. I've just it's just been sat on the shelf for ages. But yeah, this is the uh, Great Wave board. A little uh, little uh, forty percent, and people do go lower than forty percent. There is um there is the pain. Is it the pain forty or the pain thirty? That literally only has the um, uh, space bar enter key and backspace as the uh, modifiers it, it pain 28 there you go yeah 28 keys pain yeah uh, pain i think it's pain 27 actually now that you mention it i don't think it's pain 28 or is it 26 i, I can't remember either way it's it's a if, if, if you do not like, if you like typing, but you, you want to make it more difficult for yourself, do, do that. Or if you want to make it really difficult, get um, get the board that Ob, uh, Obasob is uh, typing on, um, which is literally uh, three key, it's a split split, and it's got three on either side, and it's, it uses chords, I believe, so for you to type. I, I don't understand how chords work at all, so somebody might be able to explain chords a bit better, like for typing. But the one, the one that I tried at the uh, second London meetup was um, one of the stenographers' boards. We had a we had a stenographer turn up, um, and. You can you can write at an ungodly speed on those things. I mean, the fastest person that we've had at a meetup to do a typing test was Ross, and Ross can type at about I want to say I wanted to say it was like 150 words per minute or something like that. Something it's stupid, but if you put a stenographer in front of it with their software on there, they can they can smash like 500 words. Uh, Andy asks how, so um, I believe the way that it works is if you're wanting to write, say, chocolate out, you're, you're wanting to write chocolate, you do the C 
and then the H and it starts to work out the rest of the word that's there. So what words begin with C and H and then you could hit the C, so you'd miss the vowel out and it goes, okay, so he's either writing choco or chocolate and it fills it in from there. And so you can, you only have to hit like three letters to write a word and you, you end up being able, you, they get very proficient at it because I mean, these are a lot of times they're used in courtrooms. So you, you'll have ma massive long conversations that are going on and they have to write them very, very quickly. Um, And it, you, I think you also get it, you, if you've ever noticed in subtitles um, that it'll start, that somebody will start saying a word and it sort of writes it out a little bit, gets the word wrong and then it gets it right. I think that might be some sort of stenographer style software that's doing that, where it's gotten the first little bit, it's gotten uh, the, say, um, I, I can't, can't think of a word now, so uh, say whatever. And so, so it's got the what part of it, and then it go, and then it goes. It it thinks what have you, what something, what, and then it gets whatever after they've they've put the like the e and then stuff like that. It gets that bit. It's very very clever software. I mean, the um, when we at the London meetup, the guy showed it off, and he was he was like like. It was normally always like two or three letters and it would get the word and he just wrote a sentence out in like, like, I mean, you, you, we're talking like 50 words in this sentence and it, it took him like 10 seconds, something like that. It was nuts. And he, that was him coming up with it at the top of his head. If he's, if he's getting it dictated to him and like that they're, they're in a courtroom scenario and that somebody's talking, I assume that it'd be much easier. The music has stopped. Uh, it's called try, I think, in programming and data structure terms. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't know what it's called. I just remember him, uh, him loading it up, and I don't know. To be fair, I don't know if they just use a uh, speech recognition. Um, uh, speech recognition style um, and it's doing a similar sort of style to it oh James just so that you realize this is what I was meaning earlier where it's I'm lit nicely the light in the background's nice as well and then there's that like a level between between me and it where it's a little bit darker Okay, so we've got this back together, and I'm just going to double check that all of the domes feel relatively normal. That's the main thing. Relative normality. So what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to, um, I've got to put this into the, uh, I'll, I'll plug it all together and then I've got to put it into the, just sit it in the bottom housing so that I can get a, uh, a cable into it so that I can just test to make sure that all of the switches are working. Yeah, they all feel relatively normal, which is good. So what we're going to do is we'll grab the case, and this is this is where it can work, can't work, and means that I have to end up taking it apart again uh, and putting it back together. But I'm hoping that we're going to be in luck. Okay, so that's in nicely. So let's just sit it in there for now. So I put a nice equal pressure down across the board there. Thanks, Andy. So that's, um, sorry, I missed your comment earlier. So that's Evan's new keycap profile, is it? That you've sent there. Let me just 
just get a uh, get the right one out. Okay. Yeah, James, you remember we had you had that conversation about the USB port being stupidly close. You want to have a look at this. This is Norbauer's how close it is. The, this is James's um, Pexon's one that Pexon does. So I'm going to try and get it so that it focuses nicely. Come on, be nice. Come on. Try and focus on my hand there. I don't know how well you can see that, but that is literally butting up against the side. And when when you talk about it being flush. No, not close to the bottom. I mean, the USB is that thin. I'll bring the. Uh, this is Pexon's USB. And you'll be able to just about see it. I've had to shave the USB down for it to be able to fit into the Norbair case properly. And it is literally just the, the, the hole that he has there. It's really difficult to hold this because it is quite heavy. Come on. So you can see how thin that is. It's it's the one thing that this board it lets it down, and the one thing that I do really really wish uh, is that if he would come out with a USB C um, connector cable for it. If he came out with a USB-C connector cable, or I could find, to be fair, if I think about it, I could actually make one for this. That would be interesting, actually. Hmm. Because I have the bits, and I have the expertise of a, a great master. That's a five pin. Gooch was making one, was he? That's it. That's good. Because I have got... I can get the 5-pin JST connectors. Um, that would be really interesting, actually, if I could do something like that. I'll have a think about that. Because if I could put a USB-C in there, then using this it's one of the things that I've got I've got all of these lovely cables here from pegs but at the end of the day if it's got uh, USB C I'm more likely to use it because that board that board that board and soon to be that board all have USB C it's just a laziness factor I think all right let me grab my uh, one of these cables so I've got an aviator cable here that I normally use. Okay, let me just take the old one off. Okay, you guys should have heard that. Okay, let's just get a... Let's move this over here. And let's see if I can Tester launch tester. So let me just see if I can get a nice screen region up for you guys. So da, da, da. Uh, browser source, add source. Uh, we're going to call this uh, switch hitter. So I'm, this isn't actually I, this isn't actually switch hitter that I'm using. I'm just going to move the cup of tea out of the way for a second. I nearly just knocked it over. I'll have the cup of tea after I finish the stream off. So you guys should be able to see that on the screen right now. Uh, URL. No, that's not what I want. So let's cancel that and let's just. Um, move switch edit, yes. Um, display capture, game capture. 
media source window capture that's it i got the wrong one there you go so we're going to call this one switch it um oh sorry i missed your message there uh james james says the cone feet let it down a bit for me yeah and that's partially why the ace of spades came about is the ace of spades is um a better version of this I, I i also hate the the cone feet that it uses but um, oh you're gonna be a pain in the ass are you okay so it's not wanting to show that properly let's see if i can do it by edge much as I love using Edge. So just so you guys know, I'm using a website called uh, keyboardtester.com. That's what I've always used. Seems to work pretty well for me. Um, except for the fact that it doesn't seem to like the window capture for some reason. Um, so. Let's change that to let's just remove that. Sorry guys, I'm just uh, just trying to get switch like the switch hitter to work properly. Uh, window capture, add source. Oh, I can't bother to name it this time. If this doesn't work, then I'll give up on it. No. Come on. Last one I haven't tried. Okay, for some reason it just doesn't like it. But I'm just going to quickly, all I'm going to do quickly, uh, which is a bit of a pain, I'll remove that. Need to get a piece of software, so I'll have to download Switch Hitter at some other point. Um, but I'm, all I'm going to just quickly do is I'm just going to quickly go around the board, make sure that everything is working, and find out what isn't. So, Escape works. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Print screen doesn't make a noise. Scroll lock makes a noise. Pause. There we go. Page up, page down, insert. Okay. Um, so this does work, it's just um, on switch hitter it's not showing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Zip, one, minus, plus, backspace. Enter, enter seems to be working. Shift seems to be working. Caps lock seems to be working. Tab on catch lock it. Left shift's working. So that seems to be working okay. Yeah. Okay, it's just been finicky. For some reason, the modifier keys on on the program uh, work and don't work at the same time. Okay, that's all good. Okay. 
Okay, so that's the mod key. That's the Windows key. I think everything is looking good here. Spacebar seems to be working all okay. So I don't know if it's not working properly or it's just Sorry guys, you having to hear this loads of times. I think that it's okay. I'm just gonna I'll have to put the caps back on. I might have to end up taking this apart again. But I think it's just Yeah, that seems to be working fine. I think it's actually just the program that I'm using. So all of the switches seem to be working nicely. Because let it Yeah, so I think it's working fine. So all of the switches are working fine, which is great news. Um, which is perfect. Hey Glove, how you doing? Oh sorry, um sorry, I've missed a bunch of chat here. Um oh no, the joys of dome swaps. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, catch you later then, James. Talk to you later. I, I'm sure we'll end up uh, having more of a chat about keyboard case feet another time. Yeah, um, you've come in at a perfect time, seeing as it seems to all be working. So, how you doing, though, Glove? How is your Saturday of the bank holiday been? Enjoying the weekend. Long weekend off, that's good to hear. I think we're all doing the same. Okay, that's the board nicely down in place now. Okay, so let's just put the alignment Okay, let's flip her upside down. I saw the other day, uh, Glob, a um, picture that Salvin had of um, one of the boards that he's been making in Miss Pink. Uh, Miss Pink? Was it Miss Pink? Yes, Miss Pink. And it came out really nice. Not, not my board, but um, looking very fancy. And the colour match between the, um, the the top and the bottom was really good. So I think you're going to be very happy with Miss Pink. Oh, I sent that. Will be great to see the full board in Miss Pink. Will be will great. <laughs> no, it will be really good. Uh, I'm looking forward to him actually making it on stream. Um, smart to see the board coming to life from raw material yeah exactly um, he's gonna have he's gonna have everything there so I've um, 
I'm tr I was trying to persuade him last time I talked to him to see if he would actually mill mill the board and then do a keyboard building stream of it straight after so he can build the entire board in one get one sitting sort of thing to show it off but uh, he's a busy man so I don't know if he will uh, have time to do that for the win um, asks uh, where'd you get the wooden desk from uh, this is Ikea um, this is an Ikea kitchen countertop um, that has been used as my desk a lot of them um, uh, a lot of youtubers have done this so I've got Alex drawers either side um, I've actually got some little risers on it and then a uh, nice wooden desk and I've just given this a little bit of a treatment as well so uh, a sort of a beeswax treatment um, it's always worth just making sure that it stays nice. Um, I honestly can't remember now. Um, this is, I think the desk length is two meters or two and a half meters. So it's quite a big one. It's, it's quite deep. I mean, it goes on further. It's probably a, probably an extra hand hands length. And obviously this isn't the corner of the desk. so. Side of the desk. Um, what made you want to go back to the stock domes? Well, um, I've been trying um, different bits and pieces at, and I've slowly decided to move back to um, uh, like lighter tactiles. And the BK lights are really nice. They're, they're they are really nice. Just they're a little too much for, for me now. Um, so I've decided to move back to the slightly lighter domes. Um, that's literally all it is. No, no problem, meatballs. I would hundred percent say though, if you are going to do the same as this, um, that doesn't go there. Uh, get some of the uh, capita risers as well. Oh, hey, Jampot, I'm doing very well. Very well. How are you doing? Home end. I have to say, no, I prefer my HHKB with light domes over the heavy ones. Yeah, the the heavy ones were just a little, like, as you said, like, as uh, James has said, a little too jarring. Um, the light compared to the original domes is, is nice, but I'm just moving away from all of that now, really. Um, I, I, was, I said earlier in the stream that... Uh, I really liked um, uh, heavy heavy tactiles, so I was going with Zillow V2s, like not loop specifically not lubing the um, uh, the legs of the sliders, so that I got the maximum amount of tactility. Uh, and I decided I would always do that so that I could really have that sort of jarring effect. Um, I've since moved away from that, and I've now lubing T1s properly and. And stuff like that. So, um, uh, Meatballs asks, uh, "You get the from IKEA?" So, yep, I bought this from IKEA. Um, yeah, it, it it actually falls under the kitchen countertop section, um, not desks. Um, I like the. I decided that this is solid wood, um, and it's it's really really nice. Um, but you can get the. I can't think of what they're called, the, the white sort of, um, the not lacquered finish, but it's not a proper, like a proper top wood finish sort of thing. It's a, like a fake, I 
can't think of what you call it now. It's it's similar to what this sort of stuff is made out of. It's not very hardy. Um, I mean, I've scratched this. You can probably see I've got scratches all over this desk. Um, and it's really easy. If I want to get rid of them, I can just buff them out or I can put some new beeswax over the top. It makes the desk a little bit glossy for a while, but it gets rid of all of the scratches. So, And if I do end up taking a chunk out of it, I can just sand the chunk chunk out pretty much. Uh, Jampot's trying to use the eye build. Uh, yeah, I don't have that command set up. I don't stream enough, but I'll give you an idea of what we're building here. So I have taken the uh, the uh, the light domes. So I had some I had some BKE light domes inside this board, and we've just moved back to the original uh, dome sheet. Um, Um, I was going to loop them, but I decided not to. So um, uh, I, I couldn't be bothered to loop my T ones when I built the discipline. I still think that they're really good. Yeah, I, I have uh, some T ones up on the shelf there, um, and they're really really lovely. Um, but for me now, that's probably too tactile. Um, so I've completely looped them. Um, I've, I've looped every part of them to. Uh, decrease that uh, tactility and it does feel really nice uh, Meatballs asks and the risers you mentioned are from Ikea too right yep yep they are they're the I think they're spelled capita so c-a-p-i-t-a I think that's how you spell them they're capita risers they're actually meant for uh, going underneath cab uh, like the kitchen cabinets to to raise the cabinet up but what I've done is uh, I've got the Alex drawers on top of that I've got the capital riser and then I've got the desk and they actually screw into the desk and just sit on the Alex um, drawers um, if you have a look at Jay's two cents he's actually done the identical thing just recently uh, as I've done um, and they feel it, it just lifts the desk up a little bit and it brings it to the right sort of height I mean I'm, I'm, I'm what five five nine five ten and I've got my chair sat to a okay height and it sits it sits pretty well for me so I can uh, I can strongly uh, uh, recommend it um, uh, your uh, now a cherry brand's kind of like oh no oh, oh time to put the BK heavies back on I think if you're gonna start calling me a BK uh, a brand sort of guy <laughs> no worries meatballs no I'm uh, I still prefer more tactility to the brands um, I I've had I've had some brands boards in the past and they are they're just not quite there for me they, they've not got the level of tactility needed I think that goes there just looking at the board behind me but realistically at this point if somebody came to me and had um, Zelio V1s I'd probably take them off their hands because Zilio V1s are better brands. They're, they're much, a little bit more tactility and they feel much better. So I'd probably think about buying some of them. It's a bit of a shame that he doesn't sell them on his um, uh, site or doesn't make them anymore. So they'd probably fall into the perfect one. Uh, I think I have some V1s on my ducky pocket at the work Ooh. it's not gonna be uh, not gonna quite be enough um, switches there for me though they used to live in the supreme <laughs> the, 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 sorry the, the, the super me <laughs> I think the uh, I think V1s are probably in my wheelhouse of um, uh, of uh, switches nowadays. I've moved, sort of gone full circle. But 
but uh, one definite thing is is these sound really nice but they do not sound as nice as the BKs which is the real shame of it all is BKs just sound incredible look the thock that you get from them is that's what I'm saying. just a beautiful sound I haven't tried the BKE ultralights I'm possibly thinking that they might be the next thing albeit I'm really liking the tactility on these it does feel almost linear to be fair so let me just get this and let's just plug her in and we'll load up a typing test window and stop the music and I'm going to embarrass myself with my 55 words per minute and you possibly think I'm joking when I say 55 words per minute but uh, uh, it is probably about there Okay, let's drag this over. So I can't see you mocking me at the same time here. Okay, so let's definitely do a screen capture. Um, window capture. We're gonna try it again here, boys. Probably not gonna work out very well. 10 fastest fingers. Okay, so it just doesn't want the multi-level, multi-adapt compatibility. It just does not want to work. See if that is that going to spring it into life. I mean, if I technology just doesn't want to work for me tonight. Delete window capture. Display capture. Do I just do display capture? Yeah, fuck it. Let's just do display capture. So let's drag. I'm going to have to be able to see you mocking me on the other screen here. So we're going to just do. Where is it gone? Display capture. Okay. Yep. Capture display. Okay, let's zoom down a little. So, 10 fastest fingers is going to go just above. I'm going to zoom, zoom in a bit. What the hell is this advert? Go away. Okay, I'm going to try and not embarrass myself so much because I'm telling you now it is going to be pretty horrific, my typing. So, let's have a uh, Can you guys hear the, the sound of this okay, by the way? If I open up just another browser window. Can you hear that okay? Or do you want me to get the microphone a little bit closer? do what I did for the um, typing test videos that are going up. Okay, how about now? Am 
much better. Okay, good to hear. So maybe having the I've got the the, the size of it on my screen right now is what you can see in the browser window there. So it's absolutely huge. So maybe having it slightly bigger is going to help me. I doubt it, but maybe so. Look at that, boys. Look at that. 67 words per minute. This has actually made me better. Look at that. 67 words per minute. I'm on my way to 100. <laughs> but what would you guys think? What would, what do you guys think of the sound overall? I, 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 I'm quite liking the sound, to be fair. The, the, it's a lighter thog. Um, I'll put a typing test um, demonstration up. Uh, I'll probably do the typing test for this tomorrow because um, it's quite dark in here now. Uh, but you get an idea between how thocky they were. To be fair, if you go back to the very beginning of this stream, uh, I did a little typing on the uh, the BKEs, so you'll be able to get an idea of um, of how thocky they are. But uh, yeah, they sound really nice actually, and they're a little bit quieter, which is uh, which is good. It, I, I am going to miss the uh, the heavy thock that uh, that these these BK uh, BK lights had, but uh, I mean I don't know if you guys can hear that. Like if I if I literally get like a window up here, so I'll just do control. It's actually um, in person. It's actually that this dome on its own is thockier than the uh, the switch that's in there. So, and that that's not accounting for the bottom out sound for it. So, um, sorry, I've missed a bunch of glove stuff here. So, um, uh, uh, very gentle thock sounds lovely. It's uh, mad that the backspace seems louder than the space bar. Yeah. It, it is a little bit, isn't it? Um, it might just be that I need some lube, but um, to be fair, um, the space bar I've always found in typing tests doesn't sound as like as as loud. So I, I might have to do a bunch of typing. I for ten fosters fingers, I always think that I can type faster than ten fosters fingers because the random selection of words and my mind likes to. Uh, almost do predictive like texting sort of thing so if I write uh, a, a part of a sentence my mind writes the rest in it there whereas this is I, I'm having to read each word and it's like really jarring at times the the change of pace and like double words really screw me up uh, uh, would uh, would be a great office board meatballs seems to uh, seems to like the sound of it uh, not going to have people shouting at you uh, uh, for it. Well, saying that I work from home, so uh, that's why I've got uh, uh, box pinks. <laughs> so, but uh, guys, that does conclude the stream. Uh, the board is complete. It's built again. Um, I'm going to quickly try and get a nice Ooh. photo of it. So if I bring it up here, get some nice. Uh, subtle stuff. There you go. We'll get that as the uh, thumbnail photo. So 
that brings me to the end of the stream unfortunately I'm going to do a bit more testing on this to make sure I'm happy with it um, make sure that God's sake, make sure that uh, all of the switches are working how I want them to work I'm just going to do a bunch of typing on it really um, but I hope you've enjoyed the stream and I hope you enjoyed the new layout that I've got the, the pointing down camera and everything like that I hope you enjoy it um, and I'm going to be streaming again next week so this board here has been sold um, it's going to be desoldered uh, and uh, it's going to be rebuilt uh, it's going to be rebuilt with some Gateron ink switches um, and so I'm going to be lubing them uh, if they turn up uh, this coming week I'm going to lube them and hopefully be building it next weekend uh, but more than likely what it's going to be is it's going to be a desoldering stream uh, so if you've never desoldered a board before and you want to try or you want some advice on switches or what have you I'm going to be desoldering and so uh, come on by uh, it'll be at uh, seven, 7 o'clock again uh, 7 o'clock on Saturday and uh, we'll see how we go but I hope you've all enjoyed the stream and I'm going to sign off, uh, go make myself some dinner and I uh, hope you all guys have a good rest of the bank holiday weekend. So, see you again soon.